Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm a digital pastor, an intuitive soul coach, uh, a woo-woo. I wanted to share with you something that's like very personal and very emotional to me. It's my testimony, uh, specifically my ex-gay testimony, because I feel like, you know, real ex-gay testimonies don't get talked about a whole lot. So like, I'm just really excited to share this with you. So I was baptized at age nine and fell in love with Jesus from a very, very young age. In whatever way that nine-year-olds uh, can fall in love with a dead person from 2000 years ago, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, fast forward to age 13, I realized that I'm attracted to boys and I think, oh no, I was like, I'm a just like they told me. And so I got really bent out of shape about it. Um, a couple, like a year later, my dad, uh, just outed me to my mom out of the blue, which was really wild. And my mom, doing what she knew to do as a good Christian woman, uh, took me to an Exodus International like satellite office. And if you don't know what Exodus International is, it was the largest ex-gay ministry in the world, and it promised hope for change from my unwanted same-sex attractions to uh, my God-given sexuality of being a heterosexual cisgender male, right? When I learned that it wasn't my fault, that it was actually my dad's fault because apparently he did not affirm my masculinity at a very particular time somewhere in my childhood, uh, that's why I was gay, right? That's how it turned out because it wasn't, it couldn't be my fault, you know, we had to put the blame somewhere. So uh, we blamed my dad and I blamed my dad. It was really, really toxic. You know, like I don't think that even learning that piece of information actually helped. And later on in life, I kind of realized that my dad uh, did the best he could. You know, he was trying to provide for his family, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but let's just mark that um, because of what I learned there, I learned that it was my dad's fault. And so incidentally, kind of hated him for a while. Moving along. So I was, I was more or less in and out of ex-gay therapy for the better part of 12 years. And uh, at the age of 24, I believe it was like uh, right around when I was going into mission work, Exodus International closed their doors because they recognized that they were causing a lot of damage. But I, in my head said, wow, look at those backsliders. And I really like held on to everything that they had taught me, even though they said from their own mouths, what we taught was wrong and bad and hurt people. And I just said, no, 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 the Bible says this, it's very clear. So after college, I became a missionary. Well, I, was, I became a missionary for two reasons. One, I wanted to serve the Lord. And two, because this organization that I went with called Adventures and Missions, uh, they told stories all the time of such and such and such and such met on the mission field and it was God's best for them. And then I also uh, met other uh, missionaries who were like, yeah, I was gay and I went on the world race and it made me not gay anymore. I got God's best for me. They're also talking about like blind eyes being open. They're also talking about like miracles happening. And so I was like, all right, sick. You know, if God can like literally restore sight to people, a little like sexuality change cannot be that hard, right? And so my ass goes all the way around the fucking world and you know, gets a lot of like really interesting, wonderful experiences. And at the same time, it doesn't make me uh, any less uh, attracted to the people of the same sex. I'm trying really, really, really hard to hold on. And while I was out on the field, I am walking around, you know, we're doing ministry out there, but really like we were just going and hanging out with college students in different countries who spoke English. Like that's another story for another time. Uh, but this one guy said, hey, you wanna go get a beer with me at the beer stand? We went and we got some and then he just looked at me and said, I want to make out with you. And I was like, okay. And then we started making out and I was like, this feels really, really good. I enjoyed it. And then I felt really, really, really bad about the fact that I did not feel really, really bad. You know what I'm saying? I felt bad about the fact I did not feel bad about what I did, even though it was a sin, allegedly. In that moment, it just became really, really clear to me, like something's not adding up here. I've been believing this way for a long, long time. And yet when I do it, my heart does not condemn me. And then I immediately thought, oh, my heart must be so deceitful and terrible and sinful. I must be in Satan's hands. And then that thought that I cannot stop myself from sinning drove me to the edge and I nearly took my life. And so as I was working for the missions organization, 
couple years later, dating a young woman who's wonderful, kind of was my best friend at the time. I just thought like, that's what a relationship is. Maybe this is what love is. It's just a really big respect for someone. And so we dated for about three months and like any good evangelical couple, as soon as we were at the three month mark, I started looking at rings because that's what you do, right? You know, so, you can, so I can stop sinning because something they told us was like, you don't need to be attracted to all women. You just need to be attracted to one woman. Just one. And as long as she's the one, you can work it out. Mm. Kind of gross, huh? Go start looking at rings and then like we're on our way to meet her family. And on that trip up to meet her family, like something just clicks inside me that says like, I can't keep doing this anymore. Like, because I'm lying. I'm lying to her, I'm lying to myself, because the thought I kept having was like, she's so wonderful, I just wish she was a dude. I wasn't being truthful, I was lying. I was, even though I had done everything I was told, even though I did all the right prayers, I did all like, did everything right, I was still gay. And I had, I had done everything I thought God had asked of me and I was still queer. And that drove me into such a huge, it was, like, it was like two things can come up. It's like, okay, either I need to learn how to get on board with being celibate, or I need to figure out a way to live. Cause this is shitty. I can't keep doing this to myself. And so what I decided to do, tell the truth. I, so I said to her, I, you know, I, I know I told you that I was same sex attracted and I was pretty, I was convinced that God wanted me to marry a woman because I was, I was, thoroughly convinced that God, God's best for me was marrying a woman. I just, I just didn't, I didn't, I couldn't see myself doing it. And it's like every single time I thought about it, it just like, I, I became so afraid. I became tense. It was like this terror that lived in my body that said, yeah, you could keep doing that, but just like, you're dying. And I was, and I didn't realize till I said it out loud that like, I've just, been dying my whole life slowly and I can't keep doing this to myself. So I said, I think I'm, I think I'm just gay. I'm just, I'm just attracted to dudes and that's just what it is. And she said, oh my God, that makes so much sense. <laughs> you know, after that, we, we tried to remain friends, but like, you know, like time moves on. She was really, really kind to me as, as kind as she could be. So, and then after that, uh, I came out to my bosses at Adventures and Missions and they asked me, uh, so are you gonna be a practicing homosexual? And I'm like, nope, I'm gonna be a professional homosexual. Look at me now. <laughs> I left there, I moved into a shitty basement apartment in Atlanta with my friend Casey that we, sh we shared a room. The, the roof ended right here for, for a year because we were both so effing broke. And it was the best thing that could have possibly happened to me because I was able to come out of the closet. I was able to start uh, asking the question of what it means to be a queer person of faith, what it means to be uh, a queer person who loves themselves fully and completely. What does it mean? Still love Jesus, but maybe not be a Christian anymore, or you know, be a Christian, but be queer. Like, it, it was just like every single thing started to just blossom. Everything in my life just opened up. And no, it was not easy. I lost my whole community with a few exceptions. And thankfully I got to dive headlong into some really amazing queer spiritual community here in Atlanta, which kind of accelerated my growth personally and professionally because I immediately, from the day that I came out on my blog, which is you know actually six years as of today, September 9th. Since then I've been working for the movement in some capacity or another. And by that I mean like I started working for the Reformation Project the day I came out of the closet. Dead ass. Pretty cool. And so from there, I got amazing training. I got exposed to some amazing teachers. And it is also the thing that compelled me to go to seminary and pursue a master's of arts in practical theology from Columbia Theological Seminary, which I graduated in 2020. And now on the far side of my life, my ex-gay testimony is this, that shit doesn't work. <laughs> And I was in so much pain. I, be I believed that I was doing the right thing for so long, but really what I was doing was just damaging my heart and myself and keeping myself from joy, keeping myself from God, really, keeping myself from experiencing abundant life. After coming out, I have experienced more of God's presence, more of God's love. And also I still have a relationship with Jesus. Again, in whatever way you can have a relationship with somebody who died 2000 years ago. I love Jesus. He's still a friend of mine. And I also have practices that some people say are heresy. 
or, or non-Christian or pagan or whatever. Like, here's my, here's, here's what, here's what I, I want you to know to be true. God loves you because you are queer, because you are trans, because you're gay, because you're bisexual, because you don't fucking know what you are. God loves you so much. And I know that because I love you so much. And I know it might feel really fucking scary right now to be yourself and you might feel like nobody understands you or your journey. And I want to tell you, it's okay. Because there are people out here who could get it at least this much. And I wonder what would happen if you let this idea that maybe your queerness is not a curse, nor is it something that's wrong with you. Maybe it's the thing that you created to be. What if that was true? What kind of feelings does that fill you with? What does it, what, how does your heart feel when you think about the possibility of living without always trying to deny something that feels so natural? Something I actually learned in XK, in like my XK time, XK ministry was something um, this pastor said. He said, it is worth everything to commune with God. And it is. It is worth losing my church. It is worth losing my faith. It is worth losing everything for the sake of the gospel. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please send this video to somebody you think that, like this would be helpful for them. And then do me a favor, do the like, do the share, do the subscribe thing. That'd be really helpful for me. Leave a comment below uh, with what you think about this and tell me your ex-gay testimony, you know, in the comments below. Tell me if you used to be gay and then you weren't gay and then you were gay again. Your ex-ex-gay testimony. I'm still gonna call this my ex-gay testimony. The clickbait is too good, you know what I'm saying? Um, before I go, I wanna tell you about something that I host and curate called The Crowded Table. It's an online spiritual community of people just like you who may be deconstructing their faith or questioning what it means to be a follower of Jesus now, maybe beyond the church, maybe beyond Christianity, or what it just means to be somebody who's living on purpose. It's a crowded table for every person. So if you want that, go to patreon.com slash the Kevin Garcia. We got meditations, we got a Discord channel, we got the exclusive sick ass merch. Like, you're gonna wanna be there. Uh, that's all for me. Um, follow me across social media at the Kevin Garcia. Like, share, subscribe, the whole nine yards. I love you, you're beautiful. And I'll see you later. Bye.